Hello and welcome to this overview of social class differences in historical romance where she outranks him. I'm Olivia, your favorite resource for book recommendations you can easily screenshot, and you're watching Random Olive Reads. So what is this social class difference and why is it important? Well, within historical romance, it's socially expected to marry within the same class. This is to ensure like good breeding and to maintain the social status of the parties involved. It is especially important for ladies, the daughters of titled lords, to marry either at or above their level, mostly to avoid any social climbers or fortune hunters. It is particularly scandalous for ladies to marry below their station, setting up this source of conflict when they realize that the person they've fallen in love with isn't appropriate for them. So let's look at Only the Valet Will Do by Sophie Barnes. This is a standalone novella. Lady Liliana has a meet-cute with her brother's valet in the woods and feels an instant connection with him. Unfortunately, the disparity in their stations means that it won't work out and she should stay away from him. However, he may be more eligible than he seems. Tristan is part of the landed gentry and considered a gentleman, but his father's gambling debts have forced him to seek out employment. Hiding his true identity, he becomes a valet to a viscount and meets the viscount's sister Liliana. Tristan has very little to offer with his diminished circumstances, so he also tries to stay away from the lady who has captivated him. But this is a novella, so it all works out pretty quickly and neatly. This is an enjoyable read if you need a low-angst bit of fluff. To Tempt a Scotsman by Victoria Dahl is book one of the Summerheart series. Lady Alexandra has been thoroughly ruined and is hiding away at her Duke brother's estate. She was the cause of a duel of honor that left Colin Blackburn's brother dead and her lover fleeing the country. Colin has come to seek information on her wayward lover to exact revenge for his brother's death. Of course, when Colin actually meets Alex, he is stunned to find that she is not exactly as she was rumored to be. There is a push and pull of attraction between them and multiple somewhat clandestine meetings. We eventually see Colin go from an upstanding and honorable fellow to an insanely beast of a man. Seems like a quick turn of personality there. Oh, and Alex's past lovers trying to swindle her out of money. Her Lessons in Persuasion by Megan Frampton is book one of the School for Scoundrels series. Bram and Wilhelmina have an awkward first meeting when he thinks that he is rescuing her from jumping off a bridge, but really she was just trying to have a better look at the stars. It's all banter and witty remarks between these two throughout the entire book. They meet again when Bram is being auctioned off to escort someone to the opera with the funds going to the boy's orphanage where he grew up. Wilhelmina's new stepmother is anxious to get her married off, even though Wilhelmina has no interest in marrying at all and would rather focus on being an astronomer. However, she slowly starts to realize that some of the pursuits that she always avoided because they were popular, like going to the opera or reading fiction, are actually enjoyable, and she slowly starts to shift her position on these items. As Bram and Wilhelmina spend more time together, he realizes that he's in love with her, but he is unwilling to declare his intentions since he knows that her goal is to never marry. This is a slow build to a wonderful and open partnership here and a great found family friend group with Bram and his other orphan friends. Definitely looking forward to seeing the other men of this group find their own stories. The Leopard Prince by Elizabeth Hoyt is book two of the Princes trilogy. Um, This is very loosely tied to the first book in the series, but... Never mind that. We start right away with a carriage accident, and Lady Georgina and her land steward Harry are stranded in a rainy downpour on their way to her estate. Georgina is a spinster sister to an earl and owns her estate outright from an inheritance from her aunt. Georgina and Harry don't know each other very well, and he's only worked for her estate for a few months. But on this trip, the attraction between the two begins. As they arrive at her estate, they find that the neighboring lands have found poisoned sheep, and they believe that Harry is the cause. He's got a reason to hold a grudge against the neighboring nobleman, so he is the prime suspect for foul play. 
Georgina doesn't believe that Harry's responsible and wants to help him investigate. At some point of them growing closer, they start an affair, but the social class difference and the employer-employee relationship causes tension and angst. Here's another book with some alternate points of view from Georgina's sister and the dastardly neighbor nobleman. And ultimately, we do find out who is responsible for the sheep killing at the end of the story. The Proposition by Judith Ivory is a standalone novel. We have Mick, a gruff and poorly spoken rat catcher in London, who somehow gets chased into a tea room and finagled into being part of a bet between two wealthy brothers and an elocution tutor. So Lady Edwina is the daughter of a Marquess and now living independently. She is kind of tall and gangly and a spinster. She makes her money by tutoring young ladies in speech and refinement. The wealthy men hire her to clean up old Mick and present him at a duke's ball as an actual lord. Edwina and Mick are both agreeable so that they can both profit in their own ways. Edwina gets paid for her services and Mick gets a payout at the end if he can pull it off. Despite being terribly attracted to each other, the social class difference keeps Edwina and Mick at a distance from most of the book. Plus, Edwina's deep sense of being undesirable. I really like seeing them slowly come together. Plus, there's a plot twist at the back quarter of the book that I actually didn't see coming. The Scandalous Ladies of London is the latest series by Sophie Jordan. The first book is The Countess. Miserably married Countess Gertrude, otherwise known as True, is launching her daughter into the marriage mart this year, but her scapegrace estranged husband is willing to sell her off to the highest bidder. As a wealthy inn and hotel owner, Jasper is looking to marry a titled and distinguished lady, so he entertains the thought of courting the young debutante until he meets her mother and is drawn to her instead. Loads of drama here and the introduction of a female friend group consisting of a miserably married duchess, her courtesan-turned-marchioness stepmother, and true spinster younger sister, who I'm betting will all have their own books later in the series. Now, this book isn't too complicated on the external plot. We're just dealing with the prim and proper countess denying her own desires and feeling guilt over wanting her daughter suitor, and then that villainous husband of hers. Thank you so much for watching this video. Links to all of these books are in the description box. Like and subscribe so you don't miss future videos. And you can follow me on Instagram at randomolive.